Hello and welcome back. In several of our previous lectures, we have looked at the characteristics of various cloud computing based platforms. We also looked at how to determine the impact of those characteristics on the guest applications in terms of the impact on their quality attributes. Now this impact information is very important if you want to assess different computing platforms on a set of quality attribute criteria. For example, let's say someone asks you to find out what is the best platform which supports the following four uh, quality attribute requirements. First one is security, second one let's say scalability and uh, modifiability etc. And the platforms that you are trying to compare are let's say platform as a service, infrastructure as a service and some plain virtualization based platform. So how do you assess which one will support these four quality attributes? taken together, which one will give the best option from these uh, three platforms. So in this lecture we are going to discuss a method which you can use to do this kind of a platform assessment given a set of quality attribute criteria. Let's start by looking at the regular uh, software development lifecycle activities that one goes through when you are building an application. So from the conceptualization stage right to the production rollout, you go through these steps. You start with the requirement analysis where you interact with the business stakeholders to understand what is the business requirements. And then you finally get into the phase of architecture design of your application and then move to the low level detailed design and get into the construction where you develop the code and debug it and push it to some testing and QA cycles before finally rolling it out to production where the operations uh, uh, team takes it over and then further maintenance cycles may start. So this is the traditional SDLC steps where ap every application you develop you go through these steps and particularly where you are using uh, traditional deployment and uh, uh, traditional platforms. Now. With the emergence of several cloud variants and virtualization variants and other uh, uh, possible combinations that are available today, it's an added uh, step there where you first want to make sure what type of platform you should be using for building that application. So that adds additional step where you want to do some pre-architecture platform assessment. It could be done at various levels. For example, it could be a separate activity itself at an enterprise level where you may be part of a team which is making decision about whether to go for a cloud based platform for all newer applications, let's say. Or it could be done at an individual application level where you are trying to build a solution where you can build it in house by using a regular uh, platforms. Or you may evaluate, you may want to evaluate the cloud based platform. Now those kind of assessment activities do not require that you have the full architecture of your solution done. So it's a slightly separate uh, digression from the regular path of requirement analysis architecture design as we just saw. So you're doing this uh, platform assessment in the inception phase perhaps before you actually get into the full fledged architecture design. So in order to do this architecture assessment, you have to understand, as we saw in one of the previous lectures, the characteristics of various platforms which are available to you as options. You may have, let's say, infrastructure as a service as one option, you may have platform as a service and several variants, several offerings may be there of different platform as service uh, clouds, right? Or you may simply have a software as a service. So you want to have the characteristics of all these platforms known to you. And also you may have from your earlier phase of requirement analysis, you may have come up with some of the quality of service uh, requirements where you may be able to translate them into some sort of a non-functional requirements, right? So this knowledge of impact of various platform properties on different quality attributes. So you have to have this knowledge in order to make a proper assessment of various platforms. And once you have the platform assessed, then you can make an informed decision about further architecture activities. Okay, so assessing platforms and quality attributes is what we are looking at in slightly more detail now. There are several assessment methods which are already existing today. So you may have general product evaluations, for example, simply evaluating different options. And they are typically applied in a kind of ad hoc fashion. 
or you may have a software architecture evaluation for example architecture trade off analysis method or scenario based analysis of uh, architectures method but these kind of variants they are used for post architecture assessment of software architectures but what we are talking of is something slightly different we want to evaluate different computing platforms before we get into the actual architecture design we want to see that at a higher level when we know some quality attribute requirements some non functional requirements about our system or a set of systems that we want to build we want to see what are the best possible options for building our applications so these architecture evaluation methods may not be suitable for platform assessment so you need something different to address this need so we need a systematic method which can allow you to do a platform assessment before you get into the actual individual application architecture design and often this is assessment this assessment of platform is driven by the guest applications non functional requirements so this is a method that we have proposed it involves some four steps here and on the left i have highlighted the inputs to each step and then what are the outputs from individual steps so let's say you have a set of platforms to evaluate that is one of your inputs to the very first step and then you also have identified the platform's features and other uh, architecture documents you need these artifacts the number 2 here to be able to identify the characteristic of characteristics of the platforms so the first step is to identify the platform's characteristics itself that is the output is the set of characteristics for each platform then the second step you do is you identify the impact of these characteristics on the quality attributes so here again the input is characteristics of various platforms that you identified earlier and then the architecture body of knowledge that is existing knowledge about various tactics or design patterns or other best practices which are known to you from your experience or other sources so you have that as an input and then you have a set of quality attributes on which you want to evaluate these platforms so as we saw in one of our previous lectures you could do reverse engine you could reverse engineer the impact information by looking at the platform characteristics and the architecture body of knowledge we saw an example of reliability where one of the tactic was to do snapshots if your platform allows you to do easy snapshotting so you could increase the reliability of your application so any platform which offers this easy snapshotting capability will favorably impact the quality attribute of reliability so in that way you analyze the characteristics platform char characteristics in light of the existing body of architecture knowledge and determine the impact of these characteristics on various quality attributes so as an output of step number 2 you get a impact matrix which tells how different quality attributes are impacted by various platforms and as a next step you assign the importance to various quality attributes based on whatever are your requirements so you may say that i have i am evaluating these three variants of uh, platforms let's say infrastructure as a service cloud platform as a service cloud and your let's say uh, plain virtualized platform so you are evaluating these platforms on criteria of let's say scalability maintainability and disaster recovery and you will also tell how important is each of these criteria with respect to each other so you may say scalability is the most important criteria uh, and the second most important is disaster recovery and then finally third most important is maintainability so in that way you have this set of quality attributes on which you are trying to assess these platforms and assign them a weightage so here the input again is set of evaluation quality attributes and the importance rating for these criteria so that is the input to your number step number 3 and again you get an output uh, which is uh, evaluation qa criteria weightage matrix and then finally in step 4 you apply some sort of a multi criteria decision making method one of them is topses it's a fuzzy method using fuzzy sets theory and it takes two inputs one is the qa impact matrix for platforms and the evaluation criteria and gives you a ranked list of the platforms ranked in the sense which is the best and which is the worst by following this method you will be able to assess different computing platforms on a set of qa criteria and arrive at what is the best platform that can meet your needs a detailed description of this method with an example worked out is available in this paper let's look at one example here briefly 
So let's say you have a scenario where you have three decision makers, which may be let's say enterprise architects or some other stakeholders, and they are trying to assess these two platforms, that is A1, which is a private cloud, and then A2, which is a public cloud. And they are trying to assess these two platforms on this criteria, that is number one, disaster recovery, efficiency, interoperability, and maintainability. And here criteria weightage matrix is shown on the top here that I have highlighted. And they use some linguistic variables like H to indicate high, M to indicate medium and so on. So they indicate various ratings and weights. For example, the decision maker D1, as I have highlighted here, disaster recovery has importance high, efficiency has very high, interoperability has high, maintainability has high again. And similarly for D3, for disaster recovery again, the weightage is high, efficiency remains high, and finally maintainability is medium. So similarly, alternative ratings, that is how do various decision makers assess. And this assessment may be subjective also, and but usually it is based on their own experience by studying the existing body of architecture knowledge as well as their characteristics. They would have identified the impact information and based on that they will say that let's say decision maker DM1 has identified that for private cloud, disaster recovery is only fairly supported. That is, he has given a fair rating on a scale of uh, good, very good to poor and fair, etc. The first decision maker DM1 has given the rating fair for disaster recovery. Let's just look at disaster recovery and similar applies for the others. And similarly for the second variant, that is public cloud, he has given the rating as good. That is, public cloud has a better support for offering disaster recovery than let's say private cloud in opinion of decision maker DM1. Similarly, in the opinion of DM decision maker 2, the disaster recovery on private cloud is again fair and on public cloud he says it is good. And similarly for others. So in that fashion, each decision maker based on the study of existing architecture body of knowledge and whatever they have determined the impact information of various characteristics of the platform variants on different quality attributes, they give these assessment. Now, once you have these two matrices, we follow the steps that we have already discussed to calculate the final ratings. So once you apply those steps and the details are there in the paper, uh, so you arrive at the final ratings where they calculate something called a closeness coefficient and the higher is better. That means the more the score for a given platform, the better it is. That is, it is closer to a best possible. So we see here, we compared on a larger set of platforms so it turns out that for the criteria that was chosen, public cloud seems to be the least suitable one. Whereas the plain virtualization based in-house platform, that too using a bare metal virtualization platform seems to be the best option. So in that fashion, you can compare different platforms on a given set of quality attribute criteria and make a decision about which one you should be using for your given application. So again, just to summarize, you need to first have a good understanding of what are the characteristics of different computing platforms. And then by looking at the existing body of architecture knowledge, you try to determine the impact that an individual platform as a whole may have on different quality attributes like scalability, security, maintainability, etc. So once you have this information, then you can assess different platforms for a different set of criteria. So you may be able to make decisions like where you have to say which platform out of let's say public cloud, private cloud or uh, you know a platform as a service, which one out of these is best supporting let's say security, maintainability and scalability taken together where you can give ranking between these uh, quality attributes saying that security is the most important to me and then scalability is next most important and so on. Given this kind of a criteria of various non-functional requirements or quality attributes, what platform will satisfy these requirements the best? So if you want to make these kind of decisions, then you can use the method that we discussed and make the assessment of which platform you should choose. So that is pretty much it in this lecture. Thank you.